I once again welcome you all to MSP lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. In my previous lecture, I elaborated on different type of couplings, LS coupling or Russell-Sanders coupling and how they are related to each other and what would happen and what is term symbol. I started talking about term symbol, so let me continue from where I had stopped. So term symbol is very important in uh, electronic spectroscopy, a term symbol or a spectroscopic term essentially represents the energy level of microstates. Now, what is microstate? Again, I would elaborate and I would calculate microstates for different electronic configuration. So, with the same energy of a given electronic configuration. That means, ground state also you can have a term and also you have several possible excited states and each transition should be identified. So, that is the reason we can have different terms. This is how the term symbols have been introduced. Term symbol is nothing but represented something like this. L j and j can take any value between plus or minus half. As I mentioned earlier, for a subshell which is less than half field, L minus s is the most stable one that is considered as a ground state. And if for a subshell with uh, more than half field electronic configuration, L plus s is considered. Now, L, how to calculate L and what is 2s plus 1 and then what is j, we shall calculate for few electronic configurations that I would do later after little bit explaining about those things. L can have anywhere 0 to n and when we have L equals 0 and the term symbol we are giving is S, all are capital and when n it is P and when it is 2 it is D, when it is 3 it is F, when the L value is 4 it is G and when L value is 5 it is H and 6 it is I. So, of course, you know that J is total angular momentum quantum number, it can be L plus S or L minus S, 2 S plus 1 is spin multiplicity. When we have no unpaired electron, S is 0, 2 S plus 1, it is a singlet. When we have one electron, it is half, so 2 S plus 1 will be 2, it is called doublet. When we have unpaired electrons 2, S will be 1 plus 1 sigma S, so that is 1 and 2 S plus 1 value will be 3, we call it as a triplet. And then when we have 3 electrons, the sigma s is 3 into half, so it is 1 and half. And then 2 s plus 1 will be obviously 4 and it is called quadrate. And then when we have unpaired electron 4, s equals 2 and 2 s plus 1 equals 5, this is called quintet. So, this is how we can identify and give the name for a state depending upon 2 s plus 1 value where singlet, doublet, triplet, quartet, quintet and so on. Now, to make you familiar, let us find out term symbol for different electronic configuration. Let us consider a simple P2 system, P2 system. First, what we have to do is that means two electrons are there in P orbital and write electronic configuration first you put 1, 0, minus 1, this is L value, uh, azimuthal quantum number and then we have one electron here, one electron is here. So, now L can have anywhere between, L can have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, here L is 1, so 1 is there L. So, that means here we know that S, P, D, F, G, H, i it goes 6. So, that means now we have 1 s equals 1, this is 0. So, 1 means p, we have to consider p here and then we have to consider 2 s plus 1 value. 2 s plus 1 is 1, it will be 3, 3 and then here what we should consider is less than l minus s. So, l equals 1, s equals 1, so l minus s equals 0, so this is 3 p 0. So, this will be ground term. So, easily you can calculate here. And then let us look into D2 system. D2 system. So of course, we have to write like this and then we have plus 2, plus 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2 or azimuthal quantum numbers. And then we place electron here 
So, then sigma L okay, this is 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1 equals 3. So, L equals 3 here. L equals 3 means F will come here. Okay, F. Now, S is S equals sigma S equals half plus half equals 1. Then 2s plus 1 equals 2 into 1 plus 1 equals 3. So, that is 2s plus 1 is 3 and then it is less than half field L minus s, 3 minus 1 equals 2. So, this is the term symbol for D2 electron gauge state. So, this is how you should be able to do it. If you have still doubt, let me go ahead and do one for f orbital. So, now let us take f 3. We have to write 1, 2, plus 3, plus 2, plus 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. 3 electrons are there, 1, 2, and 3. So, value will be 6. 6 means basically here L equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, you should remember which one it is. So, here S, yes, P, D, F, G, H, I. So, I should consider I here. Okay. And then 2S plus 1 is 1 and half into 3 by 2 plus 1 is 4. 4 will be 2S. This is 2S plus 1 value. 2S plus 1 is 3 by 2. 4 here. And then L, L equals 6 and S equals 4. So, L minus S equals, S equals 3 by 2 here, S equals 3 by 2. So, that means 3 by 2, 6 minus 3 by 2 will give you L minus S value. So, that means 12 minus 3 by 2 equals 9 by 2. This is here L minus S which is equal 9 by 2. So, for F3, ground term symbol is 4 I 9 by 2. So, this is how you should be able to calculate. I hope you have learned. If not, let me go for one more D 7 electronic conflicts more than half field now. Let us consider 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 6, 7. So, now the value 4 plus 2 6, 6 are there and minus 3 equals 3. 3 means you have to consider f. So, here term is f and then 2s plus 1, 2s plus 1 is this is 2 into 3 by 2 plus 1, 4, this is 4, this is 2s plus 1 equals 4 and then L equals 3. So, now J is since it is more than half field it is L plus S. This is L plus S is 3 plus 3 by 2, 3 plus 3 by 2. This will be 9 by 2. Here 4 F 9 by 2 will be the ground term. You got it? I hope you have understood. So, here I will tell you again here 7 electrons are there and then here we have 4 plus 2 6 are there out of 6 minus L value if you subtract we get L equals 3, 3 means it is F and then 2s plus 1 is we have 3 electron paired electrons are there uh, 3 by 2 or 1.5 3 by 2, 3 by 2 is the S value sigma S and then 2s plus 1 will be 4. So, that 4 is 2s plus 1 and we are putting here and then since it is more than half filled the J will be having L plus 1 S value will be at the lowest energy or least energetic one. So, here 3 plus 3 by 2 will be 9 by 2. So, this is the ground term. So, this is how you should be able to calculate the term symbols. So, now fine we can calculate, but how to determine the ground state term that is very, very important. How I wrote I will show you. So, the terms are placed in order depending on their multiplicities. Multiplicity we are referring to 2s plus 1 value here. The most stable state has 
highest S value and stability decreases as S value increases. The ground state possesses the most unpaired electrons gives minimum repulsion. Why we are considering 2s plus 1 in your highest value? Because when you have 2s plus 1 highest value, you have maximum number of unpaired electrons are there. So that means you can anticipate it has to be a ground state and it gives most stable low energy because of minimum repulsion as they are all singly occupied. For a given value of S, the state with highest L is the most stable one. For example, two terms have the same spin multiplicity 2s plus 1 value. In that case, we have to go to the L value. The highest L value one is the most stable one. If there is ambiguity for a given value of S and L, the due to some reason 2s plus 1 is also same, then L is also same. Then we have to consider the J value. The smallest J value is the most stable if the subshell is less than half filled. In that case, J will be equal to L minus S and the largest J value is the most stable one if the subshell is more than half filled. In that case, J equals L plus S. So, we have to consider these terms. Here, P2 system will be 1D. How it is 1D? See, P2 system 1D, 3P and 1S are there and 3P has a triplet state. 3P has a triplet state. Maximum S is 2S plus 1 ground state term among 1D and 1S. So, we have this one. This is a ground state. Then we have ambiguity between 1D and 1S because both of them have the same spin multiplicity, but D has a larger uh, L value. So, the D is the most stable. So, then D will be the first excited state you can consider. And now, the 3P has three terms. 3P has three terms, 3P0, 3P1, 3P2. Since the value, uh, J value for uh, uh, a less than half field will be L minus S. As a result, 3P0 will be most stable one, least energetic one. This is what I showed you, 3P0 while calculating, I directly calculated the ground state term 3P0 here because L minus S will be 1 minus 1, 0 will come. And then the next one is 3P1 and 3P2. So, this is how we should be able to determine the ground state for any electronic configuration. And as I mentioned here, uh, what is important is some similarities are there between the different electronic configuration having the same ground term. That means P n and P 6 minus n, 6 is the maximum capacity and D n and D 10 minus n and F n and F 14 minus n give identical terms. For example, P 1 and P 5, one electron was less than completely filled, 2 P term is there and P 2, P 4 again, 2 electrons are two less than completely filled electronic configuration 3P. So, there is some correlation is there that we should be able to identify. P3 is unique, we have 4S, 4S is there because here 3 electrons are there, unpaired electrons, so 2S plus 1 will be 4. And P6, we have 1S and D1 and D9 again 1 electron, 1 less than completely filled, we have 2D ground term and then D2 and D8, 2 electrons are 2 less than completely filled, we have 3F. D3 and D7, 2 electron less than half filled, 2 electrons more than half filled, 4F term we have and D4, 1 less than half filled, 1 more than half filled, D4 and D6, they have 5D and D5 is unique, we have 6S and then D10, we have 1S. So, this is how you can see the correlation. When we see the same ground state term, we can always bring some similarities as I mentioned here, D1, D9, D2, D8, D3, D7 or D4, D6 or P1, P5 and P2, P4 and we can understand and then it is easy also to remember there is no need to calculate again. So, now the term symbols for non-equivalent electrons, for example, let us consider 2P1 and 3P1. In that case, let us consider L1 equals 1 here, L2 equals 1 here and same thing we have L plus L1 plus L2 to L1 minus L2 value will be there and then we get L equals 2, 1 and 0 values. And similarly, S1 equals half and S2 equals half. Then if you consider in the same way, we can have S plus S1 plus S2 until S1 minus S2. So, we have 1 and 0 values here. That means, uh, when we have L equals 2, 1, 0 or 0, 1, 2, we have DPS and then S equals 2S plus 1, then 0, 1 and we have 1, we have 3 values are there. So, that means the corresponding spectroscopic term can also be written in this 3D, we have 15 and 3P, we have 9 and 3S, we have 3 and 1D, we have 5 and 1P, we have 3 and 1S, we have 1. So, a total of 36 is there. That means, 
3D, we have 15. What we call, these are all called microstates. Number of microstates per a given term, one can calculate. That means now, we have to calculate the microstates for different electronic configuration to know how many states are there. And all states, one can expect transitions from ground state to all these states. But due to the selection rule, we eliminate and make it very simple. In fact, I should tell you, we come across only a two type of electronic transition as far as DD is concerned. Apart from D0, D5, and D10, they are unique. D0 do not show anything. D5 also very special, why I would tell you later. And D10, there is no DD transition because completely filled. That means leave these things. Then we have D1, D2, D3, D4, D7, D8, D9. Again, similarities are there. We can classify it into simply two categories. And then one category would show only one DD transition. The other one would show three transitions. So that means what are those things I would tell you, maybe if possible today's lecture or maybe in my next lecture. So now, before that, I shall show you how to calculate microstates. For example, here, total number of microstates now for these terms are given as 3D, 3P, 3S, 1D, 1P, 1S for this combination, non-equivalent electrons. Then the total number of microstates is 6 into 6, 36. We have calculated here 36. So how we arrived at that one also, let's look into it now. Again, before we proceed to calculate microstates for different electronic configuration, whether it's a P or D or F, the way we determine term symbols for a ground state, let's look into it first. L1 equals 1 and L2 equals 2 here. Now, again, here if you see, L1 plus L2 to L1 minus L2 it goes and we have L equals 3 to 1 values are there. When you have L equals 3 to 1 values are there, we can look into the term symbols P, D and F. And then here in two electrons are there and one electron is there. When the two electrons are there, S equals 1, it will be 3. So we have to consider 2S plus 1 value of 1 and 3 for this system. We have one electron in 3P1 and 3D1 also we have one electron. Similarly, S equals S1 equals half and S2 equals half and then S will be 1 and 0. So the total number of microstates possible here is 3F, 3D, 3P and 1F, 1D and 1P and this multiplicity is 2S plus 1 is 3 whereas here multiplicity is because of 0 electrons. So here 0 spin that means no unpaid electrons. So that means total number of microstates will be 6 into 10, 60. So that is shown here 3F we have 3 into 2 into 3 plus 1, 21. And then here 3D we have 15 and 3P we have 9 and 1F we have 7 and 1D we have 5 and 1P we have 3. It's, it's basically a less coupling we have shown here. And then we get a total of 60 here. So then how we got these things? We can go back to microstates and look into it. So what is microstate? So here the number of arrangements of electrons in a given subshell for a given electronic configuration. So that means in the ground state, and we can write only one electronic configuration in such a way that the maximum number of unpaired electrons are there. And if it exceeds, we'll start pairing. But when you go to excited states, they need not have to obey uh, Aufbau principle and Hund's rule. Okay, you can have anything. In that case, what happens? Several possible excited states one can think of. And the, the sum of all possible excited states along with ground state are nothing but the microstates. And to determine the microstate for a given electronic configuration, we use this formula that is n factorial over r factorial into n minus r factorial. n factorial is nothing but the, the total electron capacity of an orbital. If it is a d2, it is a 10. Okay, if it is f, it is 14. If it is g, it is 18. If it is p, it is 6 electrons. So this is how we go. And the L is azimuthal quantum number. And the r is number of electrons in the subshell. d2, if we take it, r equals 2 and n equals 10. This is how we determine that one. So some values are shown here. So number of microstates for P2, 6 factorial, the P orbital capacity is 6 electrons. Then 2 is, the R is uh, 2 factorial. And then this is n minus R, uh, 3 because 6 minus 2. So it comes around 15. How it comes 15 also I will show you. And D2 similarly 10 factorial or 2 factorial into 10 minus 2 factorial, it comes around 45. And here for D5 system 10 factorial and then here we have 5 factorial and then 10 in minus 2 factorial. So we have 252 comes here. I will calculate again showing you in more detail. 
D1 we have 10 factorial and P1 we have 6 and then P3 we have 20. D1 we have 10 microstate and P1 we have 6 and P3 we have 20. If it is not clear here, let me do it here. Let us consider simple P2 here. P2 if you consider the total number of electrons R equals 2 and then N equals 6. So, what we will do is the formula is doing N factorial over R factorial into N minus R factorial. So, here 6 factorial and then 2 factorial and then 6 minus 2 is 4 factorial. So, this one I can write 4 factorial 5 into 6 and 4 factorial into 2 goes we have 15. So, the microstates per P2 is per P2 is 15. Let us look into D2 here. So, D2 here R factorial equals 2 again and then N, factor, N equals 10. The orbital total capacity is 10. So, here if you use the same 10 factorial over 2 factorial 10 minus 2 factorial. So, this one can be written as 8 factorial into 9 into 10 and here 2 factorial to 8 factorial. So, it goes equals 45. So, this is how you can calculate. Just look into it. I would come up with few more electronic configurations both P and D and also with the F orbital to make you familiar with calculating uh, microstates and also determine the ground term. Again in my next lecture, I will show you few ground term state determination and also microstates for several other electronic configuration. Until then, so go through uh, this course and then try to make familiar yourself to get some confidence about interpretation and elucidation of the structures. Thank you.